up to Jesus' death and uh, the events after his resurrection. And we're going to look at another one today. When the women saw Jesus just after he had risen, he told them to, t to tell his disciples and Peter, and he told them to tell them to go ahead of him to Galilee. And this story today is about what happened when they were in Galilee. And so clearly his disciples had gone up to Galilee but Jesus wasn't actually there at the time and, and they were waiting. And Peter strikes me as somebody who wasn't, wasn't good at waiting. He was often restless and so he says, I'm going fishing. I mean, they were back on home turf. They possibly even went out in one of the boats that they'd been in previously. And so James and John and Nathaniel and Thomas and two others decide that they will go out with Peter fishing all night and um, they don't catch anything and as they're bringing the boat back in early morning they can see a fire on the beach but you know it's still not that light and they don't see who's at the fire but the person asks them if they've caught anything and they say no and he says well throw the net on the right hand side of the boat and they do and there's this huge catch of fish enormous catch of fish and John turns to Peter and says it's the Lord and Peter dives into the water and they all get back to the beach and they drag up the nets which haven't even broken even though there's this tremendous catch of fish and John records all this in the last chapter of his book in John chapter 21 and what does this story and the story that comes after it, what, what does it tell us? What does it direct us towards? Well, when the disciples arrive on the beach, they find that there's a fire going and that actually Jesus has already prepared them some fish and some bread. And... Um, Back on the last evening they had together, Jesus served his disciples by washing their feet. And here, he serves his disciples by making them breakfast. He knew that they were tired and hungry, they'd been out fishing all night. He knew what they needed. And it puts me in mind of some of the teaching that Jesus gave in um, what we call the Sermon on the Mount where in Matthew 6 Jesus encourages his followers not to concern themselves with food and what they will eat and what they will drink. He says because your heavenly father knows that you need these things and he will give them to you but get your priorities right. Seek first God's kingdom And here, Jesus has dealt with their physical need of hunger. And so he can go on and talk to them about other things. And that's exactly what he does. He has a chat with Peter. It would appear that he gets up and walks along the beach with Peter and John is trailing behind. And Jesus says to Peter, Peter. No, he actually uses his other name because Peter was the nickname that Jesus had given him. He says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Now, in this passage, in English, there's one word which is translated love. Do you love me? And Peter says, you know that I love you. But in the Greek that it was written in, two words are used for love. One is filio, which is the kind of love that you would have uh, brotherly love. So love in the family, uh, between a parent and child, between brothers, between sisters. Um, the love that you would have for a really good friend. You know, so the love that often is reciprocated actually. Um, and it's for friends and family. And then there's this other word, love, which you may have heard of, which is the agape love that Jesus talked about. 
and that agape love is is more it, it's talking about a selfless love a love that will put the needs of somebody else before your own and it also extends beyond just those that you would normally find it easy to love and so in this passage Jesus says to Simon Peter do you agape me more than those and Peter says you know that I filio you and so they're talking about two different extents of love really I mean the other interesting thing to notice is Jesus first off is asking a comparison Peter do you love me more than these other disciples remember way back just before Jesus um, just before Jesus was going to die and he says you're all going to leave me and Peter says even if they all leave you I won't so he made a comparison even if they all leave you I won't um, and here Jesus is almost calling that back to him and he's saying do you love me more than them but Peter's not caught by that on this here he's not comparing himself here and so he he says you know that I love you and Jesus says feed my lambs mm, that's interesting so in order to show that Peter loves Jesus it will be revealed in action in feeding the lambs which is a metaphor and so Jesus then asks him again do you agape me and Peter says you know that I filio you and Jesus says feed my sheep and a third time Jesus says do you agape me and Peter's now a bit hurt because it's the third time what more does he have to say? When was the last time Peter did things in threes? And so Jesus says again, feed my sheep. Agape is an action. Love is an action. Because although Peter could give words, it needed to be followed up with actions. And actually then, Peter, Jesus does go on to tell Peter um, a little bit of what could happen, will happen to him in the future, that he'll be taken somewhere he doesn't want to go. And it's, it's, it's describing the manner of Peter's death. And Peter turns and he sees John and he says, and what will happen to John? And it's just, that is so like us, isn't it? We compare ourselves with other people. It's almost like... We want it to be fair, but fair means fair for me, good for me. And um, this is the last chapter in the book of John. And as a result of this conversation, people thought that Peter had just had how he would die predicted by Jesus, but that John would live forever. Because Jesus said, if I want him to live till I return, what's that to you, Peter? And so a rumour went around that John would live forever. And John wants to squash that. And so he's squashing that by including this story in his book. Beware of comparisons. So what will you ponder today? Will you ponder that Jesus is the God who gives us fresh starts? This was the second time that Peter had gone fishing all night and not caught anything and that Jesus had intervened. One was right at the very start when Jesus first asked him to follow him and now at Peter's fresh start, Jesus does it again. Can you ponder 
that God knows your physical needs and he will meet them so that you can put his kingdom first. Or ponder that Jesus demonstrated agape love, love in action for all, not just for my family and friends. And that in John 13 verse 34 and 35 Jesus said, all men will know that you are my disciples if you agape one another. And so our love in action will identify us as a follower of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these stories that we have that reveal more of yourself and your character and your love for us and for us. Help us to put your love in action in our lives.